Madam President. Senator from Kansas. Madam President, um, I ask the quorum call be dispensed with unanimous with, consent. Without objection. Uh, thank you so, so very much. Uh, Madam President, uh, as we all know, our country faces tremendous fiscal challenges. We expect our president, our leaders, and here in Congress to engage in a meaningful and honest discussion about debt, deficits, and the direction of our nation. Unfortunately, I think what Americans, certainly Kansans, are hearing from the White House and from some prominent Democrats is a relentless focus on political gimmicks to solve our problems. One of those, an example of that, is the so-called corporate jet loophole. We're focused on that instead of a serious plan to address the looming sequestration cuts that threaten to harm our economy. The President's fixation on corporate jets stand in direct contrast with his supposed desire to help the aviation industry and create jobs. Ending accelerated depreciation schedule for general aviation aircraft will send hundreds, if not thousands, of hardworking Kansans straight to the unemployment line. Our state is blessed with a significant number of people who work in the aviation industry. Even the rhetoric is dangerous. It's certainly hypocritical. The five-year depreciation schedule that has been law for nearly a quarter of a century and was not created for the benefit of, quote, rich or, quote, wealthy, but it was created for the benefit of the 1.2 million Americans who make a living building and servicing these airplanes. Accelerated depreciation helps spur manufacturing and creates jobs. I'm disappointed that the President continues his endless campaign to score political points rather than work toward a real solution to solve our nation's fiscal challenges. When 23 million Americans are looking for work, our government's first priority should be to create an environment where business can grow and hire additional workers. Increasing taxes on corporate jets and other general aviation aircraft sales will only further stifle economic recovery and result in additional job losses. According to our Joint Committee on Taxation, closing the, quote, loophole would only generate $3 billion in revenue over the next 10 years, less than the government borrows on a single day. Kansans, in particular, along with the rest of rural America, would be negatively impacted by any change in depreciation schedule for non-commercial aircraft. Farmers use general aviation aircraft to dust their crops, and rural small business owners rely on these planes to connect their businesses with the rest of the world. It makes no sense for a commercial jumbo jetliner to be depreciated on the same schedule as a farmer's air tractor. This distinction between commercial and general aviation aircraft is neither a loophole nor unique. As the five-year depreciation period is applicable to many other types of depreciation, de depreciable transportation assets like cars and trucks. If the President wants Congress to review the depreciation period associated with certain assets, then why single out one specific industry instead of taking a comprehensive approach? Because attacking corporate jets is apparently a nice political soundbite. But political sound bites don't solve our problems. Because of the expiration of the Bush tax cuts on January 1 of this year, President Obama received $600 billion in tax hikes to help fund his vision for government expansion. And less than two months later, it's back on the campaign stump asking for American taxpayers for more. While the amount of revenue our government currently brings in is near historical averages, Spending remains well above those historical norms and is projected to escalate dramatically in the years ahead. It's a long time, it's long time past to address the real problems with meaningful spending reductions, and every moment spent talking about corporate jet loopholes is a wasted moment. Americans expect leadership from their elected officials here in Washington, D.C. If we fail to take action now and leave it for a future president and a future Congress to solve, we will reduce the opportunities of the next generation to experience the country that we know and love. And we will diminish the chance that every American has the chance to pursue the American dream. Madam President, uh, I note the absence of a quorum. The clerk will call the roll.